you know, if there's ever a time when we're going to get our families to eat some wild greens, I would think that New Year's Day would be it. So today I'm going to pick some henbit and I'm going to gather just the top, just, just going to pick the tops off. There are some, uh, some bigger leaves right there, but I'm not going to go, not going to go down. See the, the seeds have started to form on those. I don't want those in my, in my, uh, food. But I'm going to pick the, the stems off. Um, we're not going to, not going to put the stems in it. But the young tender tops are the best part. And see, you can just pinch them off. We used to eat the flowers off of these when we were children. They have a kind of a sweet taste to them. I'm going to only use the leaves. Uh, when I get back in the house, it's cold today, and I don't want to be outside. So I'm just uh, just picking the whole thing. And uh, when I get back inside, I'll I'll take the take all the stems off. Oh, there's some shepherd's purse. See that shepherd's purse? That is um, that is edible too. I'm gonna put some leaves from that. There's some, there's some shepherd's purse. See, it looks almost like a dandelion, but it's not. It's a, it's a, uh, it's a different plant. You see the little, see the little heart-shaped seed pods. It's uh, also like peppergrass. Um, and I've got, I'm sure that around here somewhere, there's also some. Uh, there's, there's usually some woods, some what we used to call sheepshire. Oh, there's the, there's a, a blooming henbit. That's what I really came after was the henbit. Henbit is a spring weed, grows in the spring and fall, and it'll die right back. It's just an annual. You don't have to try to kill it out. You don't have to try to poison it. It'll, it'll go, it'll die back on its own. Although it looks like it's taken over everything. It'll go away. There they are. Some more of those. All right, I'm going to try to keep this short. So this is, I'm going to get back to my weed picking and then I'll, uh, I'm back. I'm in the house. Now I just wanted to get you a little better close up on these. The, um, the shepherd's purse, if you'll see those little heart shaped seed pods, there's really nothing else that's like this. The only thing that comes close is a, is a similar plant called peppergrass that will grow a little bit later um, in the spring. But um, if you see these little heart-shaped seed pods, you know you have um, um, Shepherd's Purse. Um, the, uh, the part I'm going to use to, to cook for greens is the leaves. Um, and um, they're, I was interested to read that they um, are widely eaten in Japan, in uh, in uh, parts of China and in Korea, and that they're often used in uh, in dumplings and in in some uh, dishes there. So I've I've removed the roots, and um, I'm going to soak these in some water. And then the second the second green that I got just now is um, is henbit, and henbit is another one. The shepherd's purse is a member of the brassica family. Um, a wild it's a wild mustard. But it's not just uh, tangy uh, flavored like most mustards are. Henbit is a member of the mint family. It has those square stems and opposite leaves, although it looks like they're joined. They're, they're not. They're actually separate, uh, separate leaves. And if you, um, there are plants, similar plants called dead nettle. Um, and uh, these are pretty easy to identify. And again, here in Texas, well, it's, it's nearly January, and these are all over the place. Um, but they will die back before spring. They're, they're just a, a winter annual. Um, so now I'm going to uh, put, some, put these in a sink full of, uh, of cold water and let them soak. And uh, we had some rain, so they already had a little bit of a wash. But I want to get, you can see there's, 
there's gravel already coming off of them um, and uh, any any little little ants or little critters that might be in there so I'm gonna let them soak for a bit just like I would my lettuce or uh, spinach or anything else that I that I gather and then I'll uh, come back and, and drain them out in a colander and then I dry them in a towel picking over my my greens here. I have some that have some discolored leaves. See, can you see those? I'm not going to use those discolored leaves. I'm only going to use the good ones. And the other stuff I will uh, I will throw away. On the hen bit, on the hen bit, I only want to pull off the leaves. There are these little um, these little kind of kind of bristly uh, seed pods that I don't want in there so I'm just pulling the leaves off no stems we all about those leaves those leaves those leaves no stems now, I've tried cooking them with the stems before and uh, they're really the texture is not very not very good now this um, this shepherd's purse I'm again I'm pulling just the I'm just pulling the leaves off I'm not going to use the stems although they're Fresh, they're really tasty. These little these little seed pods are really yummy. And like I said, it's a member of the of the um, mustard family. And and there's there's a slight tang to these. You can kind of tell that it's a brassica when you taste it, but it's not near as uh, uh, as spicy as uh, as cultivated mustard greens are. There again, pull off my little just my leaves off of my hen bit. This is a, this is a treat. I didn't expect to, to find the see how the when you pull the stems you can get some get a thread off of it there from the pulling the leaves. Um, I didn't expect to to find the the uh, shepherd's purse already. I thought it would be a little bit later before it came in. Um, uh, later in the year I'll have um, um, the sheep shire. Um, which is like a, a little little clover looking uh, sorrel and uh, yellow wood sorrel I think is the official name for it and uh, we'll also have purslane there's a lot of purslane that grows around here and it's very good uh, in salads now we could use this um, either one of these we could use them raw in salads and in fact the uh, shepherd's purse is actually good it I haven't ever tried it as wilted uh, like like wilted mustard greens but I bet it would be very good what I'm going to do today, though, is I'm going to cook uh, cook up a batch of uh, of just mixed greens in the old-fashioned way, because it's new, good luck to eat greens on New Year's Day, and uh, so we'll have some some along with our other traditional New Year's foods. Um, you'll have to come back for my black-eyed pea recipe. I have a very special one uh, that my my husband's Walita uh, taught me, and uh, it's it's uh, one of our one of our favorite meals that we eat uh, throughout the year. All right, I'm going to continue uh, picking out these um, these leaves and leaving the stems behind, and uh, get this all all fixed up, and then I'll. Uh, be back when I'm ready to cook it. Show you what we do. All right. <clears throat> All right. Now I'm ready to cook. Um, I've got some some bacon grease in my in my skillet, and um, I kind of oh I've got about a about a tablespoon for my colander full of greens. This isn't going to make a whole lot of greens, but it'll be enough for me and Paul to each have a serving. Um, going to uh, I cut up the uh, my last red onion had sprouted so I cut that top that sprouted top off of that I thought that purple would be pretty along with uh, the little dabs of purple flowers from the hen bit I'm gonna get this hot and then I'm gonna wilt them real fast 
in that hot fat. Wilt those greens real fast. I've got, I'm going to use some, uh, some, a little vinegar and a little sugar, a little salt, a little pepper. I'm just basically going to cook these while I would any mixed greens, turnip greens, mustard greens. Um, we have lots of fancier ways to do them, but these are these are the old old standbys. Before those uh, before those shepherd's purses die back, I may have to bring in some and try them as a fresh wilted mustard greens. You know where you put them uh, fresh and and uh, uncooked in a bowl and you mix hot bacon grease and vinegar together and make a dressing out of that, pour that over them and toss it. Oh, it's so good. I haven't had that in a long time and that would be really tasty. It's best with the real peppery mustard greens, but it might be pretty good with these, so I want to try it. Shepherd's Purse is my one of my favorite wildflowers. Um, I'm kind of a nut for wildflowers and I make jewelry and uh, one of my crosses I call the Shepherd's Purse Cross, and it was inspired by the little, uh, uh, the shapes on it, by the little heart-shaped uh, seed pods. Um, I'll talk about that in, a, in another video pretty soon. I'm going to be working on some things. All right, got it hot. Pour in my greens, all nice and clean and, and cleaned. Put the lid over them for just a minute. Put my lid. All right, and I'll be right back. Okay, that literally took only a minute um, for these to get uh, soft and see how see the pretty color. Um, now I'm going to add some. Little water, this pan's a little, little big, but I needed something you guys could see down into. Normally I would do these in a soft pan, but I wanted y'all to be able to see this. Um, by the way, with any kind of wild food, you need to know what you're doing. You are responsible for your own safety. Um, buy yourself wild field guides. Study very carefully. Be sure you know what you're doing. I'm no expert. I'm just a hobbyist who... Uh, does some fun things for myself, and that's what I'm talking about in these videos. Um, you need to uh, talk to local people about things. You can find out uh, what uh, what kinds of things that they they do. And uh, the, some plants there are poisonous lookalikes, so you need to be real careful what you're doing. Also, any new food, you just want to eat a little dab of it first to see how it how it works. Some things are edible at certain times of year. Some things have to be cooked properly. Uh, there's lots of variations in, in these things, but uh, uh, the, anyway, these are, just just do your homework. Okay, there's just a little dab, maybe about two, two tablespoons of vinegar. About a, about a half a teaspoon of sugar, a pinch of salt, grind of pepper. I got this vinegar on clearance uh, <laughs> for a dollar a bottle. Um, it's uh, well, quite balsamic vinegar, which basically is vinegar mixed with uh, a little uh, a little white wine. Anyway, it's uh, it's it's nice light light vinegar, and uh, well, I thought it was pretty good buy for for a fancy one. We use some of it in our uh, Caesar salad for for Christmas dinner that Paul made. That was really good. All right. All right. Yeah. That is ready to go. Let me just take up a little bowl full so you guys can see how pretty it looks in the bowl. And uh, like I said, if you can't get your family to eat wild greens any other time of year, maybe you can get them to eat them on the... Uh, New Year's Day, and then by next year, you can say, oh, it's the family tradition. <laughs> this is what we always have. <laughs> there you go. Nice mess of wild greens. Thanks, and Happy New Year to you guys.